as you use this time to kind of reflect and when you think about the fact that, you know, many people thought this team would never even get this far, does it kind of make you as a coach more anxious to get it going again? Or do you kind of need this pause time to kind of just look at everything and then kind of go from there? No, I'm ready to go. I, um, I don't think that, that, you know, I, obviously I, I got a little sick. I, it's like your body's in constant fight or flight mode, but no, I, I'm, uh, I am more excited about the next season and really we weren't ready for the year to end. I don't think anybody anticipated or expected that Maria thought our guys were ready to go. And, you know, it's really hard to get to those points. I think what you appreciate the more experience you have is it's really difficult to even put yourself in a position to be one of those 14 teams in the tournament. And, um, Went wire to wire, just came up short, but we've got a lot of continuity coming back and we'll have a lot of resources relative to draft capital and even just some flexibility to be able to, you know, add, you know, some players or re-sign some that wasn't uh, afforded to us last year. And so I'm really excited and motivated. And I think uh, I speak for our players and coaches. Nobody was ready for the season to end, but um, definitely an excitement and a motivation to move forward. And, you know, these feelings that you have from the other day will will carry you, uh, you know, to try to be better next year. Do you think that there'll be any changes that with the coaches? We know Raheem is obviously interviewing, but um, with anybody else? You know, it'll if there's changes, Maria, it'll only be because of better opportunities. Um, you know, I feel really good about our coaching staff. I think it was good to be able to have a lot of the continuity. Obviously, there could be some chips that, uh, end up falling into place relative to Raheem getting an opportunity uh, to be a head coach. Um, but uh, if if that doesn't occur and, and people don't get better opportunities, then, then uh, you know, we'll have the same group back. All right, Sean, I hope you feel better. And thank you for the time all year. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you, Maria. Hmm? Stu. Hey, Sean, it was uh, reported after the game that Tyler Higby uh, sustained an ACL injury against the Lions, I guess, just, Based on that, what can you clarify or confirm about his status as of today? Yeah, that's accurate. Um, you know, so he got that. He'll have that fixed. Um, he is a, such a tough stud and means so much to our team and in so many different ways. And it's unfortunate, but uh, he's got the right mindset and spirit. And then, uh, you know, Kyron William was able to uh, get his hand fixed yesterday and it was a successful surgery and he'll be back on the mend and, and attacking that rehab the right way. Is there anybody else besides those two that would need any sort of just off-season cleanup procedure as you guys get into that? Period? You know, there might be, Stu, but um, those things have not been communicated to me yet, and so um, I don't have that information. And then just lastly, I, I, still fresh, obviously, with the result on Sunday and everything, but do you have a preliminary idea of what, what you feel like the team's needs are as far as getting it to you know what you want it to be capable of during the next year? I think it's really early for that. You know, I think um, there's so many emotions right after the season. And like I had mentioned to you guys when I spoke to you after the game, a lot of appreciation for this group. There'll obviously be changes like there are every single year in the NFL. I think once you uh, get a chance to step back, you know, I think it's really good to be able to give the coaches off until after the Super Bowl. That allows some of the things with the coaching carousel to clear up. And then it allows us to be able to have a fresh set of eyes to evaluate the tape, our players, um, and all the different things that we don't want to address to improve our football team moving forward. Thank you. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Adam. Hey, Sean, just to clarify, what was the procedure that Kyron had? I'm not sure. You know, just, just a hand surgery to, to fix the broken bone that he had in that hand. Um, you know, I, I don't know specifically exactly what it was other than he had a successful surgery. Um, you know, when I communicated with both he and uh, Reggie yesterday on his hand. And then is there any kind of timeline for Tyler in terms of when he might be expected, like training camp preseason? Yeah, you know, I, I don't know that exactly. Obviously, when you get an ACL this late in the year, I would uh, be willing to bet you he'll be a candidate for PUP. Um, you know, but to put a timeline on exactly, I think you got to get that surgery um, you know, the rehab, you know, ends up, you know, kind of being different based on what what they end up really finding when you go in there and how the, you know, the, the recovery and the procedure ends up going, um, you know, to fix that. But um, I would think uh, at the minimum, he'll be a PUP guy. 
And then what was your reaction to Eric Henderson's new opportunity? And, you know, what are your thoughts on what he's meant to this uh, team over the years? And he's been awesome, Adam. Uh, you know, came here in 2019. I mean, basically established his own culture within the defensive line room. Has had really good track record of developing people, building relationships with our players. I think there's a toughness. There's an identity that we played with on the defensive line that is a real credit to him. It was a unique opportunity, and this was something that came up a few weeks ago. Um, obviously, we love Eric Henderson and think the world of him, but – I think it was one of those opportunities where he got a chance to work with some previous relationships. Obviously, SC is an incredible program. I have a lot of, you know, I, I think very highly of Lincoln and, and what those guys will continue to do there. And, and you know, and it, it was a, it was a good chance for he and his family to, to do something that was in alignment with some of his goals. And so nothing but love on my side. And, uh, you know, we'll um, we've got some capable guys. You know, I thought AC Carter did a great job, you know, working alongside him this year. But I think the appropriate direction to go is wait to see what exact, exactly happens with Raheem before I make any decisions as it relates to um, any possible openings on the defensive side of the ball. And then lastly, you mentioned on Sunday how this team helped you find your way again this year. What, what was it about this group that you found so reinvigorating? I think their energy, their vibe, their relentless mental and physical toughness, um, the stamina at which they just continued to come to work, whether we were three and six or seven and one at the end of the season, um, you know, just the caliber of people. I mean, I, like I mentioned to you guys, everything is and always has been and always will be about people. And when you're surrounded by coaches and players you love and that you don't want to let down, um, you're reminded of that really quickly. And I think um, a lot of those things were were on display. And I think part of the journey gave the appreciation that much more because of all the different things that we had to navigate through and just the steadiness and the consistency at which these players handled everything. All right. Thanks, Sean. Hope you feel better. Thanks, buddy. Yeah. Hopefully you guys are out there thinking, man, he sounds like shit. Let's not ask too many questions. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Hey, Sean, um, just a small point of clarity. Is the ACL the the extent of the damage in Tyler Higby's knee? I think it was ACL and MCL, Jordan. Thanks for clarifying that. Um, wanted to, I know it's, you're probably going over the game over and over again in, in your mind at this point. Um, I wanted to ask about what the, I guess, uh, sequence of decision-making was like after the third and four got pushed back because of the accepted penalty for the hold. Yeah. Uh, was there any consideration of turning that into a two down sequence or what? Yeah, there really was, you know, and th those are things that absolutely, but we got the exact coverage that I wanted on third and 14. The backside window was there for that, for that dig route. And um, it didn't go down for us. Um, you know, in hindsight, do you go for it? Yeah. It, it, in the moment I felt like let's punt it away. I still felt like with four minutes left and, you know, I, I'm going to be the first to, to look at all the decisions and I'm really excited about looking back and saying, where can you learn? Where can you grow? Um, and I do think you take things with a grain of salt because had we gotten that stop and then we end up going and winning that game with a field goal. But I do think that relative to how you call that two play sequence, when you know, you're probably going to go for it, if it's anything eight or under and really probably 10 or under in that matter. Um, you know, certainly those are things that you talk about. However, in the moment I felt really decisive about the call, got the exact coverage that I was hunting up and, it just didn't go down for us. Now, would I have given Matthew another shot in hindsight? I probably would. Um, and so those are the things that you can't neglect to uh, acknowledge and make sure that as these decisions, as these decisions and situations continue to come up, you're better equipped with, you know, the full gamut of knowledge. And, and as you know, Jordan, you know, I, I do think that there's a lot of layers that aren't necessarily taken into account with 22 moving parts the feel for the flow of the game that is a very real thing that a lot of those percentages uh, are not in tune with. Thanks, Sean. And then um, slight, slight pivot, but Matthew said to us post game that um, 
he, he he'll be back next year. Um, I only ask you this because last off season, there was some, some speculation and some, some stuff. Um, he, he sounded like, you know, he'll be back with the Rams is, is the team also committed to him, um, to, to filling out that, you know, that commitment. hundred percent. Absolutely. Unequivocally. Yes. <laughs> Thanks. And and I only ask because, you know, last offseason, there was a lot of. Yes. No, I totally understand it. But. Um, oh, man, that would be a good way to get me really riled up. No, we're we're ready to go. He's ready to go and uh, couldn't be more committed to, to having him lead us next year, Jordan. Thank you, Sean. You're welcome. Dennis. Good morning, Coach. How are you doing? Doing outstanding. <laughs> um. Byron Young and Kobe Turner, how good do you feel about having these two players on your uh, defensive front? Yeah, I'm really excited about them, Dennis. I, I just think, you know, two guys that um, did a great job for us, really coachable, very much in alignment with the things that we hunt up, make up wise. I thought Kobe was excellent. His He's mature beyond his years. And I thought Byron got better as the season progressed. But, you know, these guys are going to have a full off season. They're very mature for rookies. I think they understand how important their role and the leadership that will be expected of them um, as they move forward. And, you know, we're excited to really get to work with that. That really that is a special group of young players on this team. But those two in particular were really bright spots and uh, really pleased with them, Dennis. Um, and when it comes to the defense um, overall, what was the turning point for the unit um, after the bye week? in the way they played, or did they play any different than the first half of the season? You know, I, I thought they played pretty consistently well throughout the season. Um, I thought we played better complementary football after the bye, and I thought our offense really played at a different level. Um, but I thought our defense did a much better job of, you know, getting some takeaways. I thought some of the ways that we started games were key and critical to really pull away. And then in some of the games that we didn't, I was really pleased with the overall adjustments and, feel for in-game things. Um, and I thought that was on display the other night, but I think just the overall ability to play with one another, continue to get more and more comfortable. I thought our defensive coaches did a great job of utilizing all of the guys that we had up and active. And when you look at all the moving parts, especially on the back end, um, you know, I thought Aubrey and, and coach Beak and Mike Harris and Raheem did a great job of maximizing that room and getting a lot out of a lot of different guys and, and they were really in it together. It was a really special group. Um, I love the leadership from Ernest Jones. And then I thought we saw a lot of really good things from those young guys up front that Dennis asked me about. Like guys like Michael Hoyt and Jonah Williams took steps in the right direction. Like guys like Bobby Brown. And, um, you know, and then obviously Aaron always makes his presence felt. Thank you, Coach. Thank you for always uh, uh, taking time for us this season. Yeah, you're welcome. Appreciate that. Sarah. Hey, Sean. Um, last offseason, obviously, you went through a lot of turnover on the coaching staff. You did a lot of work just building the foundation uh, of the team. What does it mean for this offseason that you don't have to go through that work and maybe just not as much? And what is what difference does that make? It'll make my wife a lot happier. I do know that, you know, where, where um, you know, you get a little bit more time. But, you know, I think the best thing, Sarah, is, is that there was a very diligent and thorough process. And it really ran counterintuitive to a lot of my na nature in terms of the patients. But I thought that really paid off. We got a bunch of great people in this building, a bunch of great teachers, great men um, that did a great job of helping these players just continue to grow throughout the season. And you could tell they really cared about this group and those players felt that as well. And that's what we'll consistently look for. And that's where, man, I'd be, uh, it'd be so bittersweet because he is such a special leader and so deserving of an opportunity to lead a team. But if we do lose Raheem, um, there'll be a very patient, thorough, and deliberate process, um, you know, in the same manner that was reflected last year. We got guys in-house, and then obviously, uh, by nature of the rules, you need to interview external candidates as well. But it is a good thing. I feel really good a lot of, about, uh, you know, the offensive side of the ball. And then there might be some some changes if Raheem gets an opportunity that I think is uh, well-deserved and long overdue. And then do you expect Setson Bennett to be with the team next year? You know, I don't know that. I, I think that's a, I think that's a conversation for another time, Sarah. I, I think he's doing better, but um, I, 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 I would be, um, I wouldn't be in a position to answer that accurately right now. Um, that's, that's probably a long ways away from me being able to answer that. Thank you. You're welcome. Gary. 
Uh, hey, Sean. Um, hope you're feeling better. Um, Thank you. And I'll, I'll try not to. I sound through. worse than I feel. So that's a good okay. thing. You know, I don't feel as bad as I sound. Um, you know, uh, we talked to Aaron after the game. He said he, he was going to be back with Eric leaving and with Raheem possibly going. Are, have you had any conversation with Aaron and or are you concerned uh, that, you know, he may decide not to play? Yeah, you know, I think those conversations occur at the appropriate time. You know, there's so much emotion that takes place right after a game and after a season that I think, you know, and even I, I was reading earlier, you know, you see Jason Kelsey, you know, there's all these assumptions and things like that. And so I think you give guys the, the chance to really just digest the season, coaches and players alike, and, and then we'll address all those things at the right time. We'll come back. Nick. Hey, Coach. Um, just throughout the ebbs and flows of the season, what are a couple of things that really stand out in your mind about this team that really allow you to say, we have something special here that we need to continue to build on um, that really gave you that, that, that confidence to, to move in that direction? The consistency throughout, regardless of whether we were getting the results we want, the consistency and their ability to come in, with the right spirit, the right energy. I think the improvement that I saw, you know, what I think is always a key and critical factor in good teams, Nick, is do you improve throughout the season? And I think our guys definitely did that. And there's a lot of young guys that, hey, work works. And if you continue to do that and you have a growth mindset, then I do believe that good things are in store and you're only going to continue to get better. And with the, uh, the foundation um, of that locker room, some of the players that I know will be able to add, whether it be through the draft, free agency, or guys that we'll be able to re-sign and continue to work with. I'm super excited and uh, optimistic about, you know, what we got to earn. Um, but I think the uh, the motivation and the way that this season ended um, will kick us into gear the right way as we attack the offseason and, and then lead into training camp and the regular season, which it's going to be a long wait, but uh, we're excited to attack it the right way. Obviously, you didn't get the results that you were looking for in the playoffs, but how much does this help you just mentally as a head coach to kind of get recharged, obviously balancing coaching and fatherhood at the same time? How does this help you prepare to become an even better coach uh, for the 2024 season? Well, I was certainly hoping to work for a few more weeks. And then, of course, you know, you're excited. You're saying, all right, well, the only positive is you get a little bit of chance to spend some time with little man and I can't get close to him because I don't want to get his, get him sick. So uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully this will pass, but perspective, like anything, Nick is, is such a powerful thing. And so um, what a blessing that's been um, in my life. And, you know, I, I think I've kind of mentioned it to you guys a couple of times, the things that I would get upset about, you come home and you see this little guy starting to smile at you and know what the heck's going on. And, Things don't seem like they're as big a deal as what you make them sometimes. Thank you, Coach. I feel better. Yeah, appreciate it, man. Gear, you bet. Okay, I'll try not to freeze here. Sorry about that. Right. Um, just, uh, just curious for you, at least from the outside looking in, this feels like a lot, a lot like seventeen going into eighteen in terms of laying a foundation and I agree. The playoffs. Do, you, do you do you feel that way? And and I think it's a good why? parallel. I do. I think it's a good parallel. Um, you know, if you're going to compare it to any previous years, right. in my mind, it's funny you ask that. You know, you say it, it did feel a lot like that. Now, there was a couple differences, but, but yes, in terms of, you know, a lot of the young guys, you know, getting – it does feel like this was kind of a new start to the journey that we're on. And so um, I get what you're asking, and uh, and I did feel a similar sentiment, but you got to do it. And – if there's one thing that I've learned in these seven years, it's every single year is a new year. Uh, as you continue to accumulate experiences, you learn how to try to best navigate it, um, whether it be your decision making or your onboarding. And I do feel like we have a much better idea of the types of people um, and players and coaches that we want with all the turnover and um, some of the different things that we've experienced, I think will serve us well because of the approach that we'll be able to take. But this league is tough. And, um, we all know that, but I'm sure it's so excited to get back and compete and attack it with uh, these coaches and players next year. Thanks very much. That's a cool place to be in, too. You know, 
relative to all the different things that you guys have seen us go through and the, the gratitude and the, uh, the perspective is, uh, is very different. And, and for that, I, uh, I'm very happy. Thanks very much. You're welcome. Hey, we'll wrap up with one quick one from you, Laura. Hi coach. Thank you so much sure. for taking this up. I just want to know uh, how you feel like you've grown over the course of this season and what you intend to kind of take away uh, and, and kind of, you know, expound upon it going into next season. Yeah. I think, um, I think like anything else, you know, you, you have your principles and values that try to guide you, but I think I've got, I've grown in terms of being able to lean on people a lot more and acknowledge your insecurities or your shortcomings and, and not feel like you have to be perfect in every step of the way, but be a real human being that feels the different emotions, but also has a better perspective on the platform that, that you have and how you want to positively influence and affect whether that's positive change or people that you're around. And I think there was a step in the right direction. I, I don't take lightly the opportunity that being an NFL head coach affords in terms of the people you're around and the daily interactions. And so I always want to make sure that um, you're doing it in a manner that's reflective of respect for the people you're around and, and, uh, and you know, and honoring the people that came before you but also still being a human being. Um, there, there's some things that occurred really quickly for me that I think you lose perspective of what's it about. And I think um, I've got a better grasp of that while uh, certainly there's always going to be growth that needs to occur. That, that would be the biggest things is, you know, just being better equipped to be the person that you want to be for the people that you love and care about. 